talk to him. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Welcome to Assemble and let me talk to you. Let's get into the news right now. Tony Khan, he's kind of a hot mess right now, I must say. If I had any advice to Tony, it would be like Jim Ross in the Dark Side of the Ring segment. And he's just like, go to bed. Get some sleep. Go home. Set it down. Tony, we're all here for you. We're, we're all learning here, Tony, as oh, CM Punk once said. Tony needs a muffin. He needs to uh, indulge in something that will take him down a notch. Tony Khan, we all care for your well-being, my friend. You just, you need to, I think, you need to calm down. (laughs) Tony, calm down a little bit. Report, Tony Khan's Twitter activity is seen as a declaration of war by the WWE. Let's take a look here, everybody. Tony Khan has had a few days of vehement posting on Twitter, if you guys have not seen. Tony's been a little busy, even up until, I think, last night or this morning. I can't keep track, actually, because how much Tony Khan is just tweeting. Anchor Wing in the chat, you nailed it. He needs a binky and a nap. (laughs) Tony, get your binky and your bear and go to bed. Oh my goodness. As previously reported, he's taking pot shots at Triple H and Shawn Michaels, been disgruntled at the suggestion he wouldn't be Booker of the Year. Pause there for a second. I. Booker of the Year is decided by what? Who? Dave Meltzer? It's it's not a real thing, Tony. Being declared Booker of the Year from a guy's website. It ain't anything. We're focused on you. Get your binky in your bear and go to bed. <laughs> Been annoyed at the um, AI image and focus image and focus his attention on Vince McMahon. Ah, oh, damn on Vince McMahon. Ah, he's got a cane and he's just coming up on the podium. Acknowledge me. I'm ah Vince McMahon. Down my back, killing me. What do you mean I'm not in charge anymore? God damn it. I had to lose my stock. I'm not losing my stock. I'm the chairman of the board. We'll talk about Vince today too. Look at you guys dropping all the hearts on a Friday and making my day. I didn't stop there. No, no. AEW CEO, however, with John Cena and the Undertaker also find himself in his firing line. He's going around and he's just like, pop Cena, pop Undertaker. He's like, screw these legends. After Tuesday night's ratings were made public, he would take a less aggressive approach on social media. Thanking AEW wrestling, wrestlers and staff, which is the correct approach. Just say, we like he did originally. Hey, we put on an amazing show. I'm so proud of our team. Way to go from the wrestlers to the production. It was all hands on deck and we put on the best show possible. Thank you very much. And then you don't tweet for like a week. You just shutty. You stop talking. But he didn't. No, he did not. Did he? No, he did not. 1KQ also channel supporter. Too sweet. Go throw the Adam emotes in the chat for yourself oh following all of this there has been a report that Khan's actions are seen as petulant by some backstage in wwe with it also being noted by source in cm punk's camp that this kind excuse me that this is the kind of stuff that makes him happy to be away from the company oh my goodness gracious dave Meltzer has chimed in as well he's saying that will osprey's seven star match is good match you know, Kenny Omega, he's not wrestling very much, but uh, Kenny, Kenny, Kenny's, Kenny's going to do an eight-star match. Pretty great. No, he didn't say that. On the day before, did a tweet. This is coming from Meltzer. Photo in the wording, bald assholes, which was taken to mean either Paul Levesque or Shawn Michaels or both who were putting together the opposition show, which is so unnecessary. You're a CEO. Stop. You think Vince McMahon gets on the Twitter and he puts gifs and memes and photos of bald asshole or Tony Khan's face? No. <sighs> Afterwards, he wrote this week two, and I saw this one, two active. I had to really like reread this, guys. I don't know if it was you. I'm just stupid. But I had to reread this tweet to grasp what he was saying. This week, two active decades-long rating streaks from the two great legends were ended. That right there, I was like, what is he saying? These two active decade, decades-long ratings streaks from two great legends, Taker and Xena. With all due respect, 
until this week's head-to-head -head AEW on TBS versus WWE on USA. It's only a versus in your mind, Tony. Neither John Cena nor The Undertaker had even been on a WWE show with under 1 million total viewers and under 400,000 in the demo. That's, this is still Metz, Meltzer. That's likely accurate given I can't come up with an example that contradicts it, but I don't know what I'm, what him pointing this out this week accomplishes. Yeah, it doesn't, I mean, I'll give it to Meltzer there. It doesn't make any sense why Tony is like, John Cena and Undertaker were essentially, hey, look at them. These two top legends were on a show and they couldn't crack a million. It don't, it doesn't matter. Like, Tony, you're, stop competing with them or thinking you're competing with them. It's not worth it. It's just not. Focus on your product. And I don't care if it's jewelry, a car, marshmallow brand. Don't worry about what the other guy is doing. Focus on your product and putting out a better product. If he put half the energy into building stories than he does on Twitter, AEW would be in a healthier spot. whoop -ha! That's an assemble poke right there. There was also a post where in response to someone saying to him that Vince McMahon has earned the right to give cheap shots, but he hasn't. He wrote, yes, Vince has allegedly used his power and influence to shoot a lot of shots, which can be taken in many different ways. Anchor Wing coming in with eight months support or AW good will start new. Tony has worn it out. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I wouldn't recommend any of these things, but they're also very mild compared to the things McMahon, Dusty Rose, Bill Watts, Eric Bischoff, Dana White, and virtually everyone in the promotion, promotional war since the beginning of time is done. Khan noted that the no million tweet was a response to the endless people who tweet at him every day, every Thursday, excuse me, after the show does usually the top one or two numbers of the previous night. But that's considered bad because they don't hit one million viewers. There's also a strategic message in posting in the sense the one million post came at the same time he released the Jay White versus Penta match for the for next week with the idea that the post would lead to more engagement for the announcement of the match. Leave it to your marketing team to post about matches. WWE doesn't have Triple H on or Vince McMahon on Twitter every day promoting the matches for next week. WWE or WWE NXT marketing team, they put up the graphics. Let other people do the things, Tony. Stop doing these things. Bro, oh, by the way, I watched Vince Russo last night. I turned it off. This sidebar here, kind of. But I, I saw this clip of Vince Russo. He was also um, talking directly to Tony Khan. It was like 10 minutes long. Bro, wrestling. It was about five minutes of Russo talking about how he has no affiliation with anybody. It took five minutes for Russo to finally stop plugging his website to get into his direct point to Tony Khan. It was just funny to listen to Russo to say, bro, stop doing this. Focus on wrestling. I was like, I mildly agree with Vince Russo. It's shocking. <laughs> Those in WWE did contact, contact us very quickly after the post and the idea that was they saw it as a declaration of war. Uh, by still discussing the subject. Of course, that declaration really dates back to January 2019. January 2019 would be when Ken AEW really kicked into gear. Cody, the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega signing with the rest of the EVPs. Booker T also responded to this with tweeting, comparing his fixation with WWE to how things are in WCW. Uh, yeah, and I saw that Booker T was also posting about this or tweeting about it. Again, it's like, Tony, Tony, listen, Tony, Iron Man. Tony Khan needs to stop. It get, what do you guys think? I, th I think it's still like, it's just too much. Too much. Um, Russell Features quoted it. Booker T on Tony Khan's tweet referencing John Cena and The Undertaker. Booker T says the following from his podcast, the Hall of Fame podcast, quote, I got to take a dig at this last comment that he made about the NXT rating. He said that it was the first time that John Cena and Undertaker appeared in front of less than a million people for WWE. And the thing is, he, and this is where Booker T is very right. He's got edge. 
and Christian and all of those guys. So it's like when you say stuff like that, you might want to think about it before you say stuff like that. Meaning, Tony, you're sitting there with really a heck of a roster. Like we flip the other side and go, you know what, Tony? Good on you. You have some of the top wrestling talent in the world. You have had them. You currently have them. You have legends. You've had legends, etc. You have some of the greatest wrestling talent out there. People that can tell great stories, that are phenomenal in the ring. You have relationships with New Japan. You own Ring of Honor. You have so many positive things. And yet, you fixate on John Cena and The Undertaker not cracking a million on NXT. It's a little too much. Stop focusing. And I think the larger wrestling community is kind of saying this too. It's like, could you just stop? Tony Khan needs to stop. And you need to just worry about collision and this weekend and start focusing in on your product and focus in on telling better stories, having better long-term booking. And if you're like, you're so it comes across, maybe he doesn't realize this. That's the thing. Maybe Tony Khan just thinks that he's creating this wrestling war of WCW, WWF that he's always wanted to do as a kid. And he's got all of his toys and he's pursuing this war in his mind and maybe that's what this is and he doesn't see any of it and no one has the gall to turn to him and say this is wrong what you're doing you need to stop you need to get off twitter you need to stop poking the other companies because it's meaningless it just doesn't mean anything and what's happening too is that it, it's getting tony khan and as a result aew looking bad and making aew look petty and small and indie and trying to punch up to WWE, it's not the same beast. It's not the same thing. WWE has like 50 years of history and legends, and matches, and all of this. Tony Khan has a company, a wrestling company that's been around for four years. That's it. Stop comparing to this giant global juggernaut of a brand. You're not Apple. You're the tiny tiny company the startup that's what tony khan is stop comparing them stop saying we have this better than wwe and we do that better than them and i ate that stop it doesn't matter if you have if you have better matches if you have better segments if you win a ratings for a week it doesn't matter what matters is trying to put on your best product and improve it Stop doing these things. The other thing with Tony Khan, it doesn't end there. Not not. WrestleOps posted this and says that Tony Khan today confirms that AEW contract tampering from WWE story. Quote, it's when business became personal for me. Tony Khan was referencing this thing about uh, his ill mother. And he, Tony Khan wrote this, which was today. Uh, he says, or excuse me, this was posted by Wrestling Ops. Yes, it was done today. This weekend marks one year since uh, Mayo Clinic saved my mom's life during her or ordeal. Many AEW talent came to me alleging tampering, inducing them to break, excuse me, to break uh, their contracts. I'll never forget these phone calls at her side in the hospital. It's when business became personal for me. So he's bringing his mom into it now. Well, that's healthy. You think that maybe he just stop? I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. What does he think is gonna happen? He's been trending as well, by the way. It's all very sophisticated, I must say. Like it's too much, guys. I just I'm like you're kind of sitting there and cringe for him of like stop talking about stuff. Uh he also Tony Khan also was tweeting out like in a thread he posted says this is nothing new i mentioned it last year after she came home his mom it's relevant today because she checked in for surgery one year ago today as i've mentioned several times since mayo clinic are heroes and thanks to them her recovery from a very grim outlook has been a miracle tony that's wonderful this is all an episode of like intervention for tony khan mr khan that's a wonderful thing to say regarding mayo clinic that they have been able to help your mom 
that she is alive because of the wonderful healthcare staff that they have that tended to her and she is healthier, safe, stable, in a better place. Wonderful. That is the tweet. You don't bring in the WWE tampering of contracts while I was dealing with my sick mom. And then say, the fine folks over here at the clinic really, really did a bang up job and they were wonderful. But don't forget, I had to sit by my mother's side while contract tampering was happening. I was on the phone. Dude, just separate business and he's he can't now he's he's literally said it be my the business became personal when this happened i'm like no you need to separate business and personal you literally do vince mcmahon is the ultimate separator of business and personal why because he brings back racist idiots like ultimate warrior and brings in his wife to run in creative and to also be in charge of all these departments and they create the warrior award for a guy who held Vince McMahon up for almost a million dollars who brought him back several times and then starts creating statues of the mother effer and he's a terrible human being and I'm sorry if you're a warrior fan I am not when I was a kid in the 80s sure ultimate warrior yay the cartoon presentation of him woo but the human being he's done despicable things and said horrible things as has hulk hogan as has many people within wrestling for years and decades and they have said horrible things about vince mcmahon had horrible relationships with vince mcmahon and guess what vince does he puts that aside in a bucket and he looks at the business side of it to see if it's a good business decision tony khan ain't learning from that He's just like, it's all personal, goddamn. <laughs> it's wild. It's so wild to me. You have to separate your business and your personal beliefs and opinions and utilize your platform as the promoter to promote. Now I sound like Vince Russo to promote wrestling on Twitter. Stop. <laughs> Obviously, says Matt hates Warrior. I like Warrior uh, character wrestler character from the 80s running down to the ring and body slamming and splashing people in 18 seconds as a kid the presentation the human being over the years is terrible like but vince vince puts all of this aside as the point seemingly you get guys like kurt angle comes back after years in the fallout you've got warrior you got hogan Friggin' even the rumors and talks of currently of CM Punk of him coming back. Stone Cold Steve Austin walked out before the match against Brock Lesnar. The King of the Ring qualifier match, he did that. And Vince brought him back. They all come back. Vince does business. Not personal stuff. And the sentiment backstage seemingly from posts and reports and news sites and all that is that people in AEW, I feel bad for, for talent, for production, for people on their social media team that have to look at all this being like, oh man, he's, he's just keeps going. And meanwhile, I'll get into the CM Punk stuff in a second, but meanwhile, where Tony is burying himself right now is the fact that WWE does not acknowledge him to this degree. He'll take, Tony will say they're taking shots and they're doing this and that. They're not, they're not out there posting images of bald asshole on Shawn Michaels' Twitter or Triple H's Twitter or Vince McMahon or Nick Khan's Twitter. They're not doing that. And I think that infuriates Tony Khan more based on his recent activity. And it looks like one guy is crying because nobody from corporate WWE is responding to it. So it just, it just makes him look like an idiot. It really does. And I feel bad for talent, I feel bad for production. I feel bad for people that run these teams in AEW that are working hard, that trying to do this, trying to put on a show, a product, grow a product for wrestlers that are trying to get themselves over, get bloody TV time, trying to get presence on social media, trying to advance their storyline. And you got to deal with this guy just shooting his mouth off. How about Tony? You just turn on Twitter and be like, put over Ricky Starks for five minutes, put on Wardlow for five minutes. Do an interview, sit down with your talent and do some 
special behind the scenes digital exclusives. Do something else. Put your effort into your product, not bantering online with nobody. Because it's just going into the ether of X. X gonna give it to you. Let's talk about CM Punk. Tony Khan's a lot, man. Well, that's a thing. Primetime in the chat also says this. He's got to lead by example. I totally agree. That's what you are the leader. The leader. Leader. <laughs> if you are doing... This is a, a so sorry, primetime. This is an excellent point you make. You got to lead by example because what he is doing is telling talent specifically go online and shoot. If Jericho, Wardlow, Ricky Starks, Kenny Omega, who cares? Whoever go on Twitter today and shoot off on WWE directly. And post, let's say Kenny Omega posts five things about Triple H being a bald asshole and he hates everybody over there or whatever. They just start taking huge shots at each other. Tony Khan would probably turn around or should turn around and be like, hey, you shouldn't do that. But you've now opened this door that you are not leading by example. You are allowing these things to happen and you're creating this narrative and this war with the other company that doesn't exist only for yourself. So your talent, you're giving them free range to just turn around and be like, I'll do media scrums and I'll bash WWE. I'll do it on TV. I'll do it during my promo segments. I'll bring them up all the time. And for what? WWE doesn't respond. And it just makes you look stupid. Lonnie Jones with a giant sticker chat. Dude, thank you very much. Too sweet, Lonnie. Let's go into CM Punk. They're turning down the CM Punk. Look in my eyes. What do you see? Nothing, nothing for me. CM Punk. A new update has been has provided information on WWE's reported decision to reject. Chance to sign former AEW star CM Punk. Well, former WWE AEW star, but we, we, we get it. We get it. It's okay. Tony Khan's going to have a big problem with it, isn't he? <laughs> Following numerous reports, Punk. I wonder if there is this. Like, I wonder if CM. I'm going to ask you guys in the chat. And I'm actually going to post this as a post. And if you're on demand with us, thank you very much. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button if you guys enjoy the news shows that we do here. Uh, and answer me in the comments as well for this. I'm putting up a poll right now. Is CM Punk signing with WWE? Yes or no? Because it's so back and forth. Will he? Won't he? And I'm kind of wondering... Through all of this, and I'm thinking of, I'm tying the thread of of Tony Khan and his craziness right now. He's so ang, he's so angry. Could it be possible that CM Punk has signed with WWE? Because we're hearing all the reports that no, he's turned it down. WWE is putting out stuff that's saying they turned it down. They say no, it's not happening. It hasn't happened. It's not gonna. It could all be just like they're working us and we could buy into that. It could be totally true. We do not know. But here's a thought for a second. Ran random speculation here. Could Tony Khan be extra aggravated right now because CM Punk has signed with WWE and he knows it? Or believes that it is happening? And that he fumbled a lot of his talent? Uh, Jade Cargill is an example. Jade Cargill has done more with two spots pulling out of a vehicle and a digital exclusive online with more press, more fandom, more superstar pizzazz and such than Tony did with a whole streak and having her for whatever it was, two, three years. It's got to eat him a little bit where he claims that he offered Jade Cargill a new contract with a better deal. Jade turned, went to WWE. And it's a, quote, homegrown talent has left. Gotta irk him a little bit. Pillman's gone. Got vignettes. He's gonna show up. He's got a new gimmick. CM Punk may or may not be going. It's gotta bother Tony Khan. Oh, I'll be Matt Cameras. Yeah, hi. Yeah, hi. Where's Matt Cameras? All of it, daddy. Following numerous reports, Punk is in WWE and talks over a potential return to the company. It was reported earlier this week that Dave Meltzer, we take it with a grain of salt for Mr. Meltzer, Wrestling Observer Radio, that WWE had in fact turned the WWE had in fact turned Punk down at this time. 
Abigail, hi. Welcome. Welcome to the show, everybody. Meltzer, he writes, Kenny Omega's a great eight stars. The stuff with CM Punk is uh, no for now, for right now, excuse me. It could change, but it's doubtful it will at any time. It's such a Meltzer thing. It's a no, but it could change, but it might happen, but it could also not. It's like, Thank you, wise man. You change anytime soon unless business goes down or there is a huge public outcry for him. That hasn't happened. It's a Vince McMahon call. Yes, it is. Well, it could be less of a Vince now because Vince and Endeavor. Endeavor is really running the show and Vince is taking a big old back seat. But still, call and the others in charge are Levesque and Nick Khan. But in the end, they are doing what Vince McMahon wants. It was a strong enough co- uh, enough that the company officials would be willing to say that they have no interest in at this point and talks are dead right now. But I was also told not to close the door completely on it because it's wrestling. It's wrestling, uh, bro. <laughs> Even the report suggested as much as many fans have been led to believe that a punk return could happen based off of suspected teases on WWE programming made by the stars and commentators. This includes the GTS. A lot of comments by uh, Corey Graves on commentary as well. They are still hinting at CM Punk. What will be interesting is the next couple of weeks we've got a saudi arabia show then we got survivor series in chicago and then we're moving on to the royal rumble essentially it will be interesting to see if wwe still makes little comments commentary lines moves such and such on tv programming or they drop it completely i don't know wwe could also just be screwing with people triple h would be like do a gts just to play with the crowd get people talking it's wrestling uh oh daddy It's a lot, guys. Uh, Booker T had more comments. This is coming over from Wrestle Talk too. Current WWE name response to Tony Khan. This is Booker T's response to it. We talked a little bit about it, but he's got more to say. One guy I try not to dig at is Tony Khan because he's a guy trying to run a business. But at the same time, I got to take a, a dig at that last comment he made about NXT. Uh, where we talked about earlier, where he says he's got Christian and those guys in Edge. Um, the thing is, I'm sure that Tony Khan thought that that was going to be a bigger number. I can't be positive on this, but I can't imagine that Tony Khan would have thought that Dynamite would have gotten a bigger number. I don't know what Tony Khan's modus operandi <laughs> is, but I don't know what his fixation on WWE is, but I have said this once. I'll say it a thousand times. Tony Khan, Tony, got a hell of a product. He's got a hell of a thing going on, but I really think that just like WCW, they focused on WWE, WWE, everything they were doing, they were trying to counter program every Monday night. What are they doing? What are they doing? And I really think that WCW thought themselves right out of the out of the war because they were focused on winning and beating WWE when they had a hell of a product already. 100% Booker T. Stop focusing on WWE. It is like WCW. Now, you were really counter-programming because you were week to week, but WCW did it too much alongside every other problem that WCW had where it was the Hogan show and the the, the amount of the executives coming in from um, Turner, Turner Broadcasting, all everything mashed in together, Bischoff, like 10,000 things all in one pot. That was a problem. But one of the big problems was trying to constantly, once the 83 weeks were done, trying to counter-program WWE. Now, the thing that we might see, we know that we will have a Tony Khan problem, everybody. Let me talk to you real close. MDB likes this when I do this, a serious little close up like this. It's my political, my Cody Rhodes. We know that W, uh, we know that AEW will be in trouble, real trouble. If, and I'll talk to you here, if they turn around and Tony Khan vacates all the belts like WCW 2000. <laughs> Then we know it's a big problem. If Tony Khan shows up on TV one day in the next year and pulls the WCW Vince Russo Bischoff move, he gets all the talent in the middle of the ring and it's Tony standing there and shaking the microphone. And be like, hey, Tony Khan, and I vacate all the belts. And he grabs all the belts and holds them and he goes, we're running a tournament. It's a big, big tournament. Everybody's in a tournament. Redo the belts. Remember back then in like 2000? Lance Storm had, like, every belt. It was hilarious. So we know... We know it's gonna... It can be a problem. It can get away from him. And I appreciate Booker T's comments here because it's dead on. And it's somebody that has worked in WCW. 
in the war, went to WWE. Booker T is a great example of somebody who has seen it all and lived it, was in it. He knows things. Oh, Tony does love his tournaments, though. So it wouldn't be too far-fetched, would it? Would it? I don't think so. Uh, but looking at the poll here, guys, 76% of you, thank you so much for voting in there, too. 76% of you feel that CM Punk signing with WWE is a yeah. Uh, Javi, thank you very much for your super chat, buddy. Tony sounds like a kid who lost his toys that he threw away. Yeah, and he's getting mad at everybody else saying it's their fault that he lost the toys. It's ridiculous, man. Ridiculous. For the actual numbers, we covered this yesterday on the show uh, from WrestleNomics. If you guys want to watch that video, because the first half of it is going through bit by bit, segment by segment, or what the ratings were for every single thing. And yeah, Dynamite did not do well. On Tuesday Night Dynamite, uh, NXT drew a 921,000 viewers, and Tony Khan is mad because John Cena and The Undertaker couldn't get them over a million. That's his now new problem. Uh, while AEW Dynamite did 609. And it fluctuated a little bit where if you go by the uh, quarterly numbers throughout the show for Dynamite and NXT, NXT, they both, they both stayed very consistent. Dynamite, again, to what Tony Khan should be talking about is how good of a show he put on, that it was consistent, uh, regardless of counter-programming, as well as MLB playoffs, etc. All this difference and working on a different night, not your normally scheduled night. If you look at the quarterlies throughout the entire show, he actually stayed very consistent. Yeah, it's like 609. It's a bad number. Yes, he got crushed by WWE if you want to look at them one to one. Yeah, he got decimated by almost 400,000 viewers when he thought he was hyping up the biggest show of his life. He didn't do that. So, if you actually look at the numbers though, breaking it down quarter by quarter, every 15 to 20 minutes, Dynamite stayed at like 600,000, 580, 550, 600. The audience stayed. You have a core base. But the problem is, AW's base is not growing. It doesn't grow consistently. 800,000 and change is usually the number that Tony Khan draws for Dynamite. Collision has other problems too. And I want to talk about this. Um, because it, Collision's numbers for October 7th, not great. And there was a report out that, and I apologize, I don't have it in front of me. Maybe this, the article here uh, from Wrestling Inc. will talk about it. But Collision's number, Rampage did a better number, I believe, than Collision. You guys talk to me in the chat if if I'm right or wrong here. Uh, but th there, there's a there's a lot happening, a lot. So after strong, uh, strongly rated shows following the acron acrimonious, excuse me, departures of Punk, Collision found itself in a bit of a hole. You got N NXT No Mercy. Uh, if we look at this, WrestleNomics reports that Collision drew 353,000 viewers. This is for last week's Collision. I look like I'm in a weird black box because of the advertising here. There we go. <laughs> 353,000 viewers, 0 0.09 rating in the key demo. While still on the low end, Collision's viewerships, both overall 1894 demo, were up, with the overall viewership rising 8% from last week's 327. So they went from 327 to 353, so they got a slight increase. Collision also saw an increase in the female viewership demo rising 20%. The show would peak in the 1849 in the Q1, which is Ricky Starks and Big Bill surprising. AEW now is because the FTR was uh, injured. I almost said damaged. They were injured. And that's why. Kind of an odd choice, but sure. Let's do that. Uh, that drew 135,000 viewers as well as 372 total. It would remain steady. That's the thing with Dynamite and Collision. Their numbers are usually relatively steady, even if they are low numbers. Like if it's in the 300,000s, they don't lose the audience that much. They gain a little, they lose a little, but they average out around that number and it stays, it's like 370 and it might drop to 350 and go back up to 380. It stays around the same number. The show would peak in overall viewership during its closing. Adam Copeland drawing 418,000. See, there you go. Just slightly behind quarter one. With no WWE competition this Saturday, Collision will look to fully bounce back in the ratings. For this upcoming Saturday is what we're talking about. Uh, we're 
He had the match between Brian Danielson and Strickland. Challenged Christian Cage. Now Danielson will challenge Christian Cage for the TNT title on Collision. It's just not great. Collision is getting not great numbers. And they're getting Rampage numbers. Now it's a two-hour show versus a one-hour Rampage. You know what I would do, Tony? I know you're all enraged. And if you're watching, you're probably not because you should be busy. But you know what I would do? You like you got your Dynamite. You got your Rampage. You got your Collision. You got a lot. You got ROH. And you got pay-per-views. And you're going to have more pay-per-views coming up. Tony, what I would do is you've got Sunday pay-per-views. Yes? And let's assume, everybody, that AEW is going to increase their pay-per-view schedule to an official 12 a year. 10 to 12. Move Rampage to Sundays before the pay-per-view. And make Rampage... Sunday Night Heat, essentially. I love Sunday Night Heat. I know that on pay-per-views, they have the buy-in. Forget that. Make Rampage the buy-in for the pay-per-view nights. Move it to Sundays. You need to do better, and you could do a better show that way because then at least you would get out of every month, once a month, presumably, you would get a bigger spike in numbers on Rampage because if you did it on a Sunday from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern and you ran Rampage every single week, you run it before the pay-per-view for 7 to 8 p.m., then you're going to get the audience coming in and watching it. And then you would be able to have them bleed over into the pay-per-view. You'd also be able to, with Rampage, constantly promote the pay-per-view that is coming up in an hour. And I liked, I liked Sunday Night Heat. Sunday Night Heat had good matches. Just if you have that one hour, just move it to Sunday right before the pay-per-views. And then other subsequently, if you got people that you have your largest audience of, say, 500,000, 800,000, a million people that are buying the the uh, pay-per-view, your pay-per-view numbers are strong. If you move Rampage to Sundays, you will get the audience watching that as like the pre-show. And you could boost it up and you might actually grab some viewers to come back every Sunday to watch Rampage. Right now, it's just, I don't even know what happens. Like, all over the place. But regardless, the moral of the story is Sunday Night Heat was a great show. Guys, we're going to continue on with the news. But just to let you know here, a little word from our sponsor. It's me. Hi, it's Matt. If you can, do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. If you guys want to donate, you become channel members. You can actually do the fan funding in here as well. Drop some stickers. Drop super chats. Get highlighted. But at the very, very least, be here and have a good time. And that's all that matters. That's a word from our sponsor. Yeah. More creative details on Triple H taking over WWE creative from Vince McMahon. Details have emerged on the creative turn team. Hey, Matt can't talk today. It's a following Triple H taking over creative from Vince McMahon. There have been a number of significant changes made to the backstage creative team over the last year or so. Triple H, Paul Levesque here, King of Kings, officially taking over chief content officer following Vince McMahon's departure in July. Since McMahon returned to the company in January, there have been reports and rumors of changing roles within the division and with McMahon, McMahon having some creative input following his comeback. He's been back and forth. He's been doing this sometime, doing it a little bit, doing it not a lot. It's Triple H game of assassins of assassins and king of kings and golden shovels and everything. It's almost, it's almost Michelle with Undertaker. Wow, drivers. Dear per Dave Meltzer, in the latest edition of the Wrestling Observer Radio, here we go. Triple H is making the key, key creative decisions. Vince McMahon is not involved in this process at the moment. Meltzer writes regarding the process, the creative process. Right now, Paul Levesque is the person in charge. He's the only one making all the decisions. Bruce Pritchard is a conduit between creative talent relations and talent services. Ed Kosky is uh, the operations person who keeps the scripts flowing. At the moment, Vince McMahon is out of the creative process, but it was stressed to me the term at the moment. McMahon is still the person in charge of the company with the most power, but Levesque is running creative and Nick Khan is making business moves. Of course, WWE now operates as part of TKO Holdings Group, uh, Group Holdings, excuse me, following the merger with UFC. And yeah, uh, even Ari Emanuel did talk about Vince McMahon and kind of made a shot at Vince McMahon over on Twitter. Also talking about guys, if you didn't see the news yesterday, Probably did. But Ari Emanuel did talk about how they are open to WWE Raw 
subsequently NXT. Moving nights, they are open to moving the schedule around if it makes sense. Basically, if the deal is good enough, we'll move Raw, we'll move NXT, and guess what? It may really happen because this is the first official time. It's not a McMahon decision. Ari Emanuel and Endeavor can decide if they get a good enough deal from, let's just say, USA Network because they're already getting SmackDown. Let's say USA gets the whole pie. If the deal is good enough and it makes all the sense for advertisers and the revenue and WWE or Endeavor TKO's bottom line, Vince McMahon is not the final say. Ari Emanuel is the one who can sit there and go, we're moving Raw to Tuesdays. We're moving it to Wednesdays. We're going to move Raw to Fridays and we're going to make SmackDown Mondays. Wouldn't that be wild? Monday Night Smackdown? I would love to see it. I would just to mess with my brain. My whole childhood, everything was red. Monday Night Raw's war on Monday nights. Could you imagine if it's blue and it's Smackdown as a new set on Mondays? It would be so weird and so much fun. I love wrestling sometimes. So bizarre. Tony Khan, get off Twitter. Ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up the news portion here of the day of the program. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a like on the video. If you're joining us live right now, stick with me because we do have our post show. But if you're on demand, thank you very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on Punk. Tony Khan's craziness when it comes to just uh, all of it. All of it. It gets wild, doesn't it? Tony needs a break. And as you said in the chat from some of you fine people, Get him a hot cocoa, get a blankie, and a teddy bear. Go to bed. Too sweet. See ya. Let me talk to you.